afternoon a very good afternoon and uh, welcome to our next episode of c3 with n3 that is cheat codes and concepts with dr nikita nanwani nathani and our today's topic of discussion is a very very important topic that is your cardiac the left ventricle pressure volume loop so i see many students getting confused in this topic but actually it's a very very easy topic very conceptual so if you understand the loop very well you can answer whatever questions are asked on it be it you know they'll ask you what corresponds to s1 they'll ask you calculate the cardiac output murmur is seen in which condition we have already seen one part of it uh, of the uh, pv loop in one of my special classes the free classes if you have missed that i have shared the links of all the cardiology sessions on the telegram group so you can watch those sessions so today we will be discussing in you know the normal pressure volume loop and in which valvular disease what will be the change in the pressure volume loop what will change so yes happy afternoon sudha moksh abhinaya raji rizwana hello everyone so this is what is the one graph that you all need to master it's a very very important topic and to tell you i personally love graphs and calculations and mathematics because mathematics had been my favorite subject during my school days rather i had scored 100% in my 10th board exam in maths but then somehow i landed up into the medical field but yes that mathematics wala pyar is still there so i love that the graphs the calculations so that's why i've taken quite a few sessions on your general pharmacology calculations the physiology calculations as well and uh, so before i move ahead uh, a quick update for all the plus subscribers that you have a class tomorrow 12:30 to 2:30 where i'll be discussing you had a test today on radiology so the radiology test would be discussed tomorrow 12:30 to 2:30 the next class october 23rd when we have the high yielding topics for all your exams revision course that i have started you have on 23rd and then i'm st i'm starting with radiology dedicated course uh, a detailed course from october 26 right and i hope all of you have downloaded the unacademy learning app to watch all the free sessions attend the live quizzes and attend the plus courses as well if not if you are subscribing you can use my referral code dr nikita and i'm hoping to see you all on the plus platform because it has so many features right and this i've already told you in november also we have quite a few sessions where we will have grand test series and discussion we will have radiology dedicated mcq discussion course as well five sessions where i'll be discussing the radiology mcqs dedicated in those five sessions that starts on november 3rd that starts on november 3rd and your next free live class that is on the unacademy app the special free live class is tomorrow 22nd october at 7:30 pm and uh, because so many of you have requested for this topic tomorrow on in the special class we would be discussing the brain stem lesions the brain stem syndromes so we will try and simplify that topic it's again very very easy once you understand the concepts of it so tomorrow 7:30 pm we will discuss the brain stem lesions it's a free class just you need is the unacademy app and an internet connection that's it also you can attend the live quizzes on the unacademy app 8 pm and 9 pm and again at 9 pm and 11 pm i also conduct the quizzes on the unacademy app we share the links on the telegram group so now let's start with our today's class without further delay and uh, so this is your pressure volume loop for the left ventricle for the left ventricle so where is pressure indicated and where is volume indicated that's the first basic thing that we should know volume is along the x axis or is it along the y axis pressure is along the y axis or the x axis that is what we need to know so remember that the pressure volume loop may pressure is along the y axis volume is along the x axis that is what you see here so the left ventricular volume is on the x axis the left ventricular pressure is on the y axis these are the points that you can see a b c d so basically your curve your graph the loop goes like this in this direction okay so the direction is your anti clockwise direction that is how it is going right and now if i ask you tell me the phases in this pressure volume loop which are your isovolumetric phases 
which ones are your isovolumetric phases is it points a b points b c c d or d a which points are your isovolumetric phases Nishu, the session would be maximum for half an hour or if, if less than that, maybe less than that, maximum is half an hour session. So, Jayansh says A, B and C, D. Absolutely right, Jayansh. So, when I say isovolumetric, okay. So, when I say the term isovolumetric, that means iso means same and volumetric means the volume remains the same. So, that means on the volume is indicated on your x-axis so the graph is not changing in the horizontal direction when volume is on the x-axis isovolumetric means ye jo volume hai, it is it is remaining the same the volume is remaining the same it is not going the graph is not going in the right direction or the left direction so which are the points which we see here which is vertical line basically is isovolumetric so this one line and this one line these are your isovolumetric because you can see that the volume is the same the volume is remaining the same for example 50 here for example let's say it's approximately 120 here so this is your isovolumetric phase now again if i ask you which of these is isovolumetric contraction and which of these is isovolumetric relaxation easy contraction when the left ventricle is contracting what is happening the pressure is increasing relaxation the pressure is decreasing there is decreased pressure so where do you see the pressure is increasing pressure is your y axis so if it is going up the line is going up if this is your zero point here if the line is going up for the that means it is increasing the pressure if the line is coming down that means it is decreasing the pressure so you can see the points a b this is your line going up so this is your isovolumetric contraction that is a b wala point this is your relaxation because you can see the line is coming down so that means the pressure is decreasing from 100 then it is coming to say approximately 5 or 10 so relaxation is your cd right so isovolumetric contraction isovolumetric relaxation right now when i say contraction very very easy will it be a part of a systole or will it be a part of a diastole what would it be a part of contraction basically means systole so this is a part of systole isovolumetric relaxation that means it is the part of diastole diastole may pressure come hota hai so this is your basically a part of diastole and this is a part of systole right so this is your early diastole which is happening this is your early systole which is happening here the volume is not changing why because the valves are closed there is no place for the blood to go anywhere the valves are closed that is why the blood from the left ventricle is not going anywhere so it is isovolumetric so now if i ask you which are the points here which indicate your systole and diastole which points indicate systole and diastole okay so this is the point from your point c to your point a is the point this is indicating diastole from your point A to point C, it is indicating your systole, okay? So, if we understand what's happening in diastole and what's happening in systole. So, diastole may, diastole may the ventricle gets filled. That comes in the later part. Initial is your isovolumetric relaxation. Then is the filling of the left ventricle. When will the left ventricle get, get filled? When your mitral valve, which is between the left atrium and the left ventricle, it opens right so this is the point where your mitral valve opens and the left ventricle gets filled that is what we are seeing here so isovolumetric relaxation we have seen this is isovolumetric relaxation pressure coming down volume remaining same so early part of diastole then is your filling of the ventricle sorry excuse me just give me a moment I have dropped my pen. Let me get it back. Yes. 
So when the mitral valve opens, this is where you will see the filling which is happening. Okay. So this point where the mitral valve is opening, you can see the filling happening. When the filling is happening, basically the volume of the left ventricle is increasing. The volume of the left ventricle is increasing. So this is the point where you see that the volume is increasing. From 50, the volume is going to 120. So this is the point where your mitral valve is opening. Mitral valve opens in diastole or systole in diastole. So this is all your part of point C to A is your diastole. Out of that CD is isovolumetric relaxation and filling valve phase is your point D to A. So D to A becomes your filling valve phase. Is everybody understanding this? Just give me a thumbs up or a yes in the comments so that I know that all of you are understanding this concept. Right, so what we have seen here is about the, is about the diastole part, take okay? a diastole part. Next, we will see about the systole, what happens in the systole. Again, your point here, systole mein kya hoga? Systole mein kya hoga? First is your isovolumetric contraction because it's a systole, isovolumetric contraction, very good. And then when the aortic valve opens, so now let us draw it like this. So left atrium, left ventricle ke beech mein, if this is the left atrium, this is the left ventricle, you have mitral valve here and left ventricle se fir yahan pe aega aapka aortic valve, right? So when the aortic valve opens, the left ventricle ejects the blood into the aorta. So this is what happens. Here is the point when the aortic valve is opening. So basically this is the part of systole which is happening. And then the blood is getting out of the left ventricle. That means the volume is decreasing. That means on the x-axis your line will go towards the left. Right? So this is where you see the volume is decreasing. The volume is decreasing. So this is your period of ejection. This is your part of isovolumetric contraction. So basically your points A to C is the ones which indicate the systole. Out of that isovolumetric contraction is your point A to B and the ejection valve phase is after your aortic valve is opening that is points B to C. That is points B to C. Right? So it is as easy as that to understand the LV pressure volume loop. Just that you have to remember, yaha se jab aap start karego, ye direction hai. This is your diastole which is happening. And uske baad, uske baad is your systole which is happening. Thik hai, ye direction hai. Ye direction hai. It's the anti-clockwise direction. So this is where the systole is happening. This is the part. This is the part where the filling is happening because the volume is increasing. This is the part where ejection is happening because the volume is decreasing. Here vertical lines are isovolumetric. Vertical lines are isovolumetric, diastole relaxation, systole contraction. As easy as that. Okay. So now if I ask you which point in this pressure volume loop indicates, indicates the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume. Which points indicate end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume? Which points indicate end diastolic volume and end systolic volume? Yes. So where is, yes, yes, Jayansh, absolutely right, Sai, uh, SK, absolutely right. So this is the point we said, this is your, this is your diastole. We have seen this diastole. Hai. Diastole is ending here. So this point is your end diastolic volume, which is your point A. So end diastolic volume is point A, which is your end systolic volume. Which is your end systolic volume? Where is the systole ending? Systole is ending here. So I can call it as point C or point D. Farak parta nahi hai kyunki wo to same hi hai. Volume same hi hai dono ka. So end systolic volume basically would be here which is your point C jo hai. Because that is where the systole is ending. But C and D are same. So that is your 
that is your end systolic volume that is your end systolic volume so what is the stroke volume what will be the stroke volume how do we calculate stroke volume stroke volume matlab ek stroke mein left ventricle ne kitna blood eject kiya what is that matlab kitna aaya usme se kitna eject kiya that is your stroke volume how much comes into the left ventricle is your end diastolic volume because that is when the ventricle is getting filled and how much it is ejecting out so that is your end systolic so you have you have your how much is remaining at the end is your end systolic volume that means at the end of the systole that much is remaining so this is your stroke volume edv minus esv so this point here let's say 150 uh, 120 and 50 so stroke volume is indicated by the width of the loop this is very very important to understand so your width of the loop basically your edv minus esv that is your stroke volume that is your stroke volume the width of the pressure volume loop is your stroke volume now if i ask you how do you gauge the pulse pressure here how do you gauge the pulse pressure pulse pressure basically systolic diastolic ka jo difference aata hai that is the most important point so this points which you see ye jo maximum pressure hai aur yahan pe jo pressure hai this height indicates your pulse pressure theek hai so the pulse pressure is basically indicated by these points by your these points the maximum pressure here and the pressure here when the aortic valve opens this is your pulse pressure we all know the pulse pressure widens in which condition which valvular condition the pulse pressure widens you have wide pulse pressure there was a video on aortic regurgitation signs right it is aortic regurgitation so we will see when we see the graphs of the valvular diseases ki kaun si condition mein kya hota hai now these are your let's say this is your figure a this is your figure b this is your figure c and this is your figure d all right so now if i ask you grossly if you see this lesions uh the graphs which ones indicate the stenotic lesions and which one indicate the regurgitant lesions theek hai which ones are your stenotic lesions and which ones are your regurgitant lesions now stenotic lesions could be either as or it could be ms there is aortic or mitral stenosis regurgitant could be ar or mr it could be ar or mr now whether there is as whether there is ms jab when there is aortic stenosis so if this is the left ventricle your aortic valve is here if it becomes narrow the amount of blood ejected that is your stroke volume it decreases right so in your aortic stenosis stroke volume decreases what's happening in mitral stenosis your mitral valve is narrow so the filling is affected that means end diastolic volume will be low so that means again the volume which is coming is less in the left ventricle so here also your stroke volume is decreasing whenever i say the stroke volume is decreasing that means the width of the loop will decrease so this is what you see here in your graphs a and b in your graphs a and b what you see here is theek hai ye aapka in all the graphs this is the normal one this is the normal one which they have shown the pink one is the affected you know the final graph so you can see this is the normal width and this is the affected width so the width is narrow stroke volume decreased so it is stenotic lesion this is the normal width this is the final width width is narrow so stroke volume is decreased so easy to remember whenever stroke volume is decreased it is stenotic whenever stroke volume is increasing it is regurgitant lesion so where you see the stroke volume is increasing those are your regurgitant lesions ar or mr basically the blood is coming back to the left ventricle mitral regurgitation may be lv se la mein jayega but finally to fir lv mein aayega so the stroke volume is increasing so remember this basic point that the basic point to remember which is very easy stenotic may stroke volume decreases so you have narrow loop 
and regurgitant may the stroke volume increases so you will have broad loop you will have broad loop now how will you differentiate as from ms and ar from mr okay you see that the graph the loop is narrow the loop is narrow in aortic stenosis since there is aortic stenosis when the left ventricle has to eject the blood it will contract it has to contract more because the outflow is less the outflow is narrow so the pressure is more so what you see in your aortic stenosis the pressure is high this is the normal pressure this is the pressure in your aortic stenosis so you will have high pressures so what is happening in aortic stenosis the loop is tall and narrow because the pressure is increasing and it is stenotic so decreased stroke volume in your mitral stenosis the stroke volume is less right so it's a narrow but the pressure is not changing kyunki contractile ki pe koi farak nahi padta we know that in mitral stenosis your left ventricle contractility is not affected so the pressure is not changing what is the difference you see normal edv let's say is 120 here it is 100 so the end diastolic volume is decreasing because the filling of the left ventricle is decreased so what do you see where is the graph shifting the loop shifting in mitral stenosis is it shift to the left or is it shift to the right where is the loop shifting in mitral stenosis because shift to the left that means it indicates your decreased end diastolic volume decreased filling so there is shift to the left okay so there is shift to the left now regurgitant lesions all right regurgitant lesions whenever you see as compared to your normal graph the graph is more broad always think of regurgitant lesion so ar versus mr how do we differentiate ar from mr the most the first thing that should come to your mind whenever you are reading about aortic regurgitation is your wide pulse pressure is your wide pulse pressure what indicates the pulse pressure here we have seen these points the difference between this is your pulse pressure look at the pulse pressure in this graph it is increased as compared to your normal okay so your wide pulse pressure is here that is why this is your aortic regurgitation you look at the look at the pulse pressure here it is not widened it is not widened okay it is normal you cannot see the wide pulse pressure so this is your mr so this is the easiest way to differentiate between ar and mr there are other points also like when you see in this phase when the ventricle is relaxing theek hai when the ventricle is relaxing here in ar because the aortic let us see here this is your left ventricle this is your aorta this is your aortic valve if there is aortic regurgitation that means the aortic valve is not closing so during the phase of isovolumetric relaxation which is this phase it should be ideally isovolumetric because all the valves are closed but in aortic regurgitation the valve is not closing that is why the blood will come back so that is why you will see that during that relaxation phase also the lv volume is increasing so you can see the graph the line of the relaxation it is going towards the right theek hai kyunki usme blood abhi bhi aa raha hai during the relaxation phase so this is the other way you can see that the blood is coming even during the relaxation phase that means the aortic valve has not closed properly that means it is aortic regurgitation it is aortic regurgitation all right so this is about your graphs most important easy to remember let us quickly revise aortic stenosis increased pressure stenosis hai to stroke volume decreased that means narrow so tall and narrow mitral stenosis stenosis narrow rahega plus it will be shift to the left because the filling is affected aortic regurgitation mitral regurgitation broad loops broad loops the difference being there is a wide pulse pressure here there is a wide pulse pressure here no wide pulse pressure here here your line is going here because the blood is coming back so this is your aortic regurgitation this is your mitral regurgitation all right now let us quickly solve some questions some of the questions 
वेर आई हैव डिस्कस की एटिक स्टिनोसिस का मर्मर कौन सी फेज में दिखेगा माइट्रो रिगोजिटेशन का किस में दिखेगा आई हैव डिस्कस इन वन ऑफ द फ्री क्लासेज ऑन अन अकेडमी एप I have shared the PDF uh, today itself of all the cardiology sessions that I have taken up till now. You can grab that and watch those sessions. Okay. Let's start this question. On the graph showing this left ventricular volume pressure, isovolumetric contraction occurs between which points? Tell me what will be the answer to this. Isovolumetric contraction occurs between which points? Option A, option B, option C, or option D. Very good, Abhinaya. Absolutely right. So whenever you see isovolumetric, isovolumetric is your vertical line. ठीक है ये याद रखना कि volumetric में isovolumetric क्या है vertical lines. So either it would be point one to two or it could be points three to four. Here they are asking isovolumetric contraction. The where pressure is increasing. So one to two, three to four is your isovolumetric relaxation. The pressure is decreasing. So this is your isovolumetric relaxation. This is your isovolumetric contraction. All right. Let's go to the next question. The aortic valve closes at which point? Very easy to answer if you have understood the graph. The aortic valve closes at which point? Yes. Option A, option B, option C, or option D. Where is your aortic valve closing? Absolutely right. It is at your point. Three point three. So when I say that the aortic valve is closing, so this is the left ventricle. You have your aortic valve. Aortic valve एक बार बंद हो गया, मतलब the systole is ending. Systole is ending. That means your diastole is starting. Isovolumetric relaxation is starting. So this is the point where your aortic valve is closing. This is the point where aortic valve closes. because this is where you see the ejection is happening after that the aortic valve closes once the ejection is over so point number 3 is where your aortic valve is closing all right if the question was where is the aortic valve opening aortic valve opens at which point aortic valve opens at which point where the ejection is starting when the aortic valve opens darwaza khul gaya blood bahar jayega तो वॉल्यूम कम होगा सो दिस इज योर पॉइंट नंबर टू एटिक वॉल्व ओपन एट पॉइंट टू एटिक वॉल्व क्लोज एट पॉइंट नंबर थ्री पॉइंट नंबर थ्री वेर इज द माइट्रल वाल्व ओपनिंग माइट्रल वाल्व ओपन हुआ यर यू हैव योर माइट्रल वाल्व इफ दिस ओपन द ब्लड विल कम इन टू द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल द वॉल्यूम इंक्रीजेस सो वेर द वॉल्यूम इज इंक्रीजिंग फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट सो द माइट्रल वाल्व ओपन एट पॉइंट नंबर फोर वेर इज द माइट्रल वाल्व क्लोजिंग That means no increase in volume anymore. Which is your point number one. Okay, this is your point number one. All right. Next one. The first heart sound corresponds to which point? So you can see there are n number of questions that can be asked from the graph. I'm giving you an overview of how all, all type of questions can be asked. The first heart sound corresponds to which point? Point number one, two, three, four. what gives rise to first heart sound what gives rise to first heart sound so we know your first heart sound is when your mitral valve tricuspid valve it closes or opens there is a sound when the door is closed when you shut the door it creates a sound so mitral valve or tricuspid valve closing will give you the first heart sound okay the av valves the atrioventricular valves so where is the mitral valve closing the mitral valve is closing here that is what we already saw so mitral valve closes that is your s1 so point number 1 is your s1 point number 1 is your s1 all right next question you can also get calculations on this if the heart rate is 70 beats per minute what is the cardiac output approximately of this patient 
what is the cardiac output of this patient what do you think will be the answer to this you have to do you know approximate calculations not very you know exact calculations so we know cardiac output is heart rate into stroke volume heart rate is given as 70 stroke volume is the width okay so basically this point minus this point so if i have to calculate this is given as 50 this is 100 this is 150 so iske beach ka somewhere this is 75 this is 125 so let us take for example you know close approximate agar lete hai. so your end systolic volume is 65 and diastolic volume where the final volume let us take it as close to 140 150 ke baju mein theek hai so approximately kitna hai stroke volume 140 minus 65 which is approximately 75 so if i calculate 75 into 7 theek hai agar main 80 into 7 bhi karti hu close karti hu 70 into 70 bhi karti hu to 49 hota hai so 49 matlab close is your 5.25 i have taken less so you have to just do approximate answers if i do 75 ke badle i take 70 for example so 49 hai 49 ke upar wala answer is your 52 ye wala answer hai you don't have to look at you know ki pura liters mein calculate karna hai approximate answers work this is how you do fast calculations so the answer will be 5.25 liters per minute approximately all right Yes, so that's all about our pressure volume loop. I hope all of you have uh, understood this topic. And as I said, I have shared this uh, PDF where I have taken all the cardiology sessions up till now. These are the free sessions that I have taken. I have taken on ECG. Okay, I have taken a session on ECG. Then murmurs. There are three sessions. I have given you the links also in the PDF, direct clickable links. Cardiology integrated part one is where I have taken your rest of the pressure volume loop ke questions related to murmurs. Do you know in which phase of the loop you will see aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation murmur. And these are the links cardiology simplified part two. These are the links on your YouTube pressure volume loop link also I've given already for your revision and the plus subscribers there are sessions I've taken on ECG, diuretics, MI, infective endocarditis, all your Robbins tables for MI you know what changes are seen gross, microscopic, VOSA and ECG there are three sessions complete ECG I've taken there with your concepts and MCQ practice. So make sure you revise all these sessions for cardiology. It will clear your concepts. It will give you some insights into how to approach the questions. All right. So that's all for today, guys. I hope all of you enjoyed the session and no more you will be afraid of this topic because it's very, very conceptual. Remember, you have your free live class, which is a special class tomorrow. That is 22nd at 7 30 pm and as i said we will be discussing the brainstem lesions the brainstem syndromes the brainstem lesions because many of you have been after my life since a long time so let's finish it off tomorrow plus you have the plus subscribers please take a note you have radiology tnd discussion the test which was conducted today from 12 30 to 2 30 tomorrow is your radiology tnd there are 50 questions that we would be discussing and this is also tomorrow. So plus subscribers 12.30. If you are not subscribed, you can use my referral code Dr. Nikita for subscription to get the additional discount. Special class is free to all available to everyone. 7.30 p.m. We would be discussing the brainstem lesions. I'll share the links of both of these sessions on the Telegram group. So stay connected. And that's all. Uh, goodbye. Take care. Keep studying. Keep revising and keep winning. I'll see you tomorrow 12.30 p.m. and 